Do you know how to play an instrument? Learning to play music is a great skill to have in life. Different instruments may be harder or easier to learn, but all of them can be used to entertain people and glorify God. Today, we will learn about a time when God used trumpets to give his people victory over their enemies. We'll learn more soon, but first, our big picture question. As we've been discussing the stories from Judges, we have been asking the question, what is repentance? And as we learned, repentance is turning away from sin and turning to Jesus. God wants us to obey him out of love. When we disobey God, that's sin. We repent of sin by not just turning away from sinful choices, but by turning toward God. He loves us, and when we repent, forgives our sin. Then he gives us eternal life with him. I have another question for you. Do you know what a constellation is? A constellation is a group of stars that people in ancient times thought looked like different pictures, almost like a connect the dots picture. Aries is a Latin word that means ram and the constellation is supposed to look like a male sheep. If you ask me, it doesn't look much like a sheep, but the ancient name still stuck. But as strange as it might seem, the story of the constellation Aries made me think of our Bible story today. Fleece comes from sheep, and fleece is a part of our true Bible story. Let's check out the story for today. Israelites once again did not obey God, so God allowed them to be ruled by their enemies, the Midianites. The Midianites were cruel to Israel. They took Israel's food and animals. The Israelites remembered how good life was when they loved and obeyed God. They cried out to God, save us. The angel of the Lord came and sat under an oak tree he appeared to a man named Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon was afraid. His family was the weakest family in his tribe, and he was the youngest son in the family. But the Lord had chosen Gideon to deliver the Israelites from the power of their enemy. The Lord assured Gideon, I will be with you. When the time came to go to battle, Gideon blew a ram's horn. An army of men gathered behind Gideon, ready to fight. Gideon wanted a sign from God. He prayed, I will put fleece on the ground. If the fleece is wet with dew, but the ground is dry, I will believe you will deliver Israel as you say. That is exactly what happened. The fleece was so wet that Gideon squeezed enough water out to fill a bowl. But Gideon asked for another sign. This time, the fleece was dry and the ground was wet. God told Gideon that he had too many people with him. Gideon sent home everyone who was afraid to fight. 10,000 men remained. That's still too many, God said. God made a test for the people. All of them were to go to the river to drink the water. Anyone who knelt to drink water was sent home. But whoever lapped the water with his hand to his mouth stayed. Three hundred men remained. That night, Israel's armies carried torches, blew their trumpets, and shattered pitchers. They ran toward the camp of Midianites. Gideon and his army chased the Midianites, and they ran away. God gave Israel the victory. The Israelites said, Gideon, you rescued us. Now we want you to be our king. Gideon said, no, God will rule over you. But after Gideon died, the Israelites once again ignored God and forgot about him, who had delivered them from the power of their enemies. 
The Israelites cried out to God because they knew they could not save themselves. Even Gideon was not enough to save them. God used Gideon to help his people, but God fought the battle for them. The people needed someone who was mighty to save. Jesus Christ came to save us from sin because we cannot save ourselves. Only God, through Christ, can save us. Well, I can't say I didn't expect this. God's people turned away from God again. They chose to worship false gods and do what seemed right to themselves without paying attention to what God had told them was right. What happened next showed more of the pattern. Enemies came in and took over, and after a while, the people of Israel remembered how much they needed God. They cried out to him, and he sent Gideon to rescue them from Midian. I love this story because it is such a reminder of God's faithfulness, but also of God's power. God did not choose the strongest man from the most powerful family. He chose the youngest man from a weak family. God did not ask thousands and thousands of Israelites to fight against the army of Midian. Instead, God made Gideon's army smaller and smaller. God was going to prove that it isn't human strength that wins the day. God showed Gideon that victory comes from him. You see, had Gideon charged into battle with the bigger, stronger army and won, the people might have said something like, you know, God is okay, but we won because we are great fighters and powerful warriors. We don't need God. We have a big, huge army. That would be foolish and a bad thing to believe. The Israelites cried out to God because they knew they could not save themselves. Even Gideon was not enough to save them. God used Gideon to help his people, but God fought the battle for them. The people needed someone who was mighty to save. Jesus Christ came to save us from sin because we cannot save ourselves. Only God, through Christ, can save us. Let's check out our questions from kids' video for today. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Mason from Clay Center, Kansas asks, My friends really like to play sports, but I'm just not good at them. I try really hard. Why doesn't God give me talent on the soccer field? Mason, that's a great question. I'm sure a lot of your friends probably wonder the same thing about different things. It may be sports or maybe artwork or singing. There are many of us have something in our lives we wish we could do better, but we struggle to be able to do it. We're just not gifted or talented in that area. So here's the big idea though. We all have been gifted and talented by God in some area. He gives us, each of us individually, something where we're stronger in. And he wants us to use that for his glory, of course. So I know that there's probably another area in your life that you really do well in, and that's an area where you can just thrive and give him glory in what you're doing. But now what about soccer or an area you may not be as strong in? Well, God gives us those weaker areas in our lives as well because he wants us to learn to depend on him. We need to rely on him and trust in him and also recognize that sometimes an area where we're weaker on somebody else is stronger on and we can see how God provides that person into our lives as well. It's kind of like Gideon in the story today. Gideon was a weaker man. He was afraid to do what God called him to do, but God gave him the ability so that everybody, Gideon and the Israelites and the Midianites and everyone would see that God was the one at work, that God would be glorified. And so let me encourage you, find a way that you can glorify God in everything you do. If it's on the soccer field, by trying as hard as you can, continuing to learn, continue to practice, and give God glory in your effort. And whatever area you're really good at, give God glory by being humble in that area and pointing others to Him. So in what area are you weak and need to depend on God to help you? 